Why does it take so much to set up? Hi there, it's Eugenie here. If you're new, I'm a first year PhD student in the EECS department here at MIT. In 2020, I applied to eight PhD programs in computer science, and I was fortunate to get into everywhere. But in this video, we'll talk about my interview process. <laughs> January 2021 is probably the most chaotic month of my life. I had seven interviews from five schools in that single month. I have a lot to tell about what happened over that month. For example, how I ended up bawling my eyes out in one of the interviews with one of the most influential, reputable people in my field. It was not embarrassing at all. This video will focus on the timeline, the process, and the questions I got. I'll make a separate video on my reflection and the tips and tricks on interview preparation. All of my interviews were on Zoom, but I think a lot of things will still be transferable for in-person interviews. After the new year of 2021, Colombia gave me the first interview invite on January 4th. And my last interview invite was from Michigan. In total, I got one interview from Columbia, three from Berkeley, one MIT, one UW, and one Michigan. All seven were done within one month, so from early January to early February. But except for the interview from Columbia, that's a special case, all other interviews were 30 minutes each. So the breakdown of the time is basically the first 20 to 25 minutes, it's chit chatting a little bit, and then they ask you questions. In the last five to 10 minutes, they tell you what they work on, and you also get to ask them questions. The tables turn. <laughs> the only exception for me is the Columbia interview. It was two hours, but it was really a special case. Um, so it's an outlier, we'll throw it out. All my interviews were done with professors that I mentioned in my SOP. So there are people that I want to work with in the PhD program. Professors are unique people and they really have their unique stream of thoughts. Nothing except for personal life is off the table when it comes to questions. But then many questions were shared among most of the interviews and I roughly put them into three categories. So the first one is about motivation. Basically, why grad school, why computer science, why the field you are interested in and want to do a PhD program in, and why not industry? The second category is professional development related. For example, what do I enjoy the most in my past project? And what do I want to get out of the PhD program? The last category is research related. I roughly grouped the questions in this category to two subcategories. Let's say the professor picks a project that I previously worked on. So some less technical questions can be like, how did I come up with this problem? Can you give a summary of this project? Would you do anything differently if you had a second chance on this problem? Then the more technical questions and be like, what are the assumptions of this project? If this scenario happens, how would your method behave? What are the limitations of your method? What would be some examples of the downstream applications of your project? So these are some of the examples of the commonly asked questions that I got almost in every single interview. I'll make a separate video on the tips and tricks on interview prep, how I answer those questions. So stay tuned for that. Now here comes the fun part. I also get to ask for, you also get to ask questions. So the goal is to signal the interviewer or the professor that you're interested in working with them. So it's basically, it's like, pick me, pick me, but yet gotta make it natural. So I have some really proud questions that I ask. I think they're useful. <laughs> now let's pretend that you are the professor <laughs> and I'm asking you the questions. So for example, what are your advising styles? Do your advising styles change throughout my PhD? Like, are you more hands-on at the beginning and then hands-off later? Or, yeah, elaborate. What is your expectation for your students by the end of their PhD journey? What are some of the projects I can take on from day one? And lastly, where do you see yourself in the next five years? If I feel that the chat is going very well, I would also ask if I can meet their students and what to expect afterwards. Yeah. Oh, I can't feel my legs. Anyways, I'll do the rest of the video this way. <laughs> it's a great sign if they say they'll introduce you to their students without you even asking. And sometimes they'll tell you what to expect without you asking to. At Berkeley, the professors have to report back to the committee. It's out of their hands after that point. But at a different university, the professor told me if I don't receive an offer by 8 p.m. that night, 
call him. So that says something about their personality. <laughs> Also, do not forget your follow-up email. I always follow up with any to-do items. Like, I would say, thank you so much for chatting and looking forward to meeting your student X. And even when there is no to-do items, following up with a thank you email will leave a good impression. So yeah, that's the end of the video. My next video will be about the tips and tricks of interview prep. So stay tuned for that. So good luck with your application or whatever you're doing. <laughs> I'll see you next time.